Well, two unlikely allies are doing what they can to survive, but are they even a match for what's to come? Or in this case, who? He's healed. Who? Me. The man from Miami. Give me the thumb. Now. Hand it to me. Just walk it over. Thumb. What are you... Why are you doing that? Stop. I still can't believe you stored a human thumb inside of a cheese puffs bag. Well, you know you have to be a certain level of special to hold your own alongside Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson. And our next guest does just that in the new Netflix film, The Man from Toronto. He plays the man from Miami and is clearly all kinds of suave and talented. So let's give a massive Monday welcome to Mr. Pearson Foday! In the house! Good morning, Pearson. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Are you kidding? Well, first of all, what, I, I saw that this movie was happening, and then that I saw that you're in it. I was like, say what? First of all, I told you earlier during the break, Woody Harrelson, Kevin Hart, what else is there to say? This, this movie is an action-packed comedy, uh, uh, obviously an incredible buddy comedy with two of the best actors in the world, and Kevin Hart was a rock star. So uh, I think people can go to this movie. Uh, it's number one on Netflix right now, mm -hmm. and have an absolute blast with anybody they watch it with. All right, so watching it, we know is going to be a blast. But what was it for you having to work with these two, having to have all the fun on set and say you're working, but it's really fun? It, it, what a terrible job I have, huh? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just to work with two of the coolest guys in the industry. Um, Kevin, Kevin's an absolute entertainer. I mean, the man literally in that sequence that you just saw, we shot that for three, four days maybe. Mm -hmm. And um, he made a stand-up routine out of a box of oatmeal, a soap dish, and uh, random packages across everything that we destroyed in there. And he's, he's the funniest man alive. It, it's super simple. Every scene was just spent trying not to, to laugh with him improv -ing. And Woody's just cool as a cucumber, man. He's just... Easy going, laid back, and was like, what's up, baby? How you doing? Mm -hmm. you know? All right, so that's you describing Woody Harrelson is how I would describe the man from Miami, which is who you play. Wouldn't you say? Thank you. He he is. He's a he's a very cool, collected uh, sociopath. And he's, I think uh, <laughs> when, when they... So far, I always describe him. You know, you got the world's deadliest assassin as Woody. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the handler has to send out somebody to take out the world's deadliest assassin. So the only person fitting would be the world's other deadliest assassin. Who you Me. describe as a psychopath. A well-dressed psychopath. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a thoroughbred. He's a well-dressed. So, so, so let's just say in this movie, you play the man from Miami. In real life, you're the man from where? Uh, Moses Lake, Washington, nowhere close to Miami, a farm. <laughs> uh, we talked about this farm before, which, which brings me to this question. What is this I hear about you selling a cow? Yeah, uh, okay, uh, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I raised cows. I sold asparagus on a street corner. I, I was a proper farm kid. Um, uh -huh. I, I had raised from a, a bummer calf, which is one of the calves that mom kicks off uh, after having twins. So I, I raised my first calf, sold him off. His name was Chocolate. He was amazing. And then I raised about 40 head of cattle by the time I had left, and I sold off half of them, gave the rest to my family, and then paid rent and lived my life in L.A. after that. Okay, so you go from the farm to L.A. And so how much time in, in between selling the, the cow did you end up on The Bold and Beautiful? Oh, God. Uh, that I think that was probably three years oh. in between selling the last of my herd uh, and doing the whole uh, random actor thing where you sleep on couches in your car and do all the little side hustles that you can. And then I finally made it onto the Bold and Beautiful. And that, I got these two guys right behind me, which I'm really lucky to have. Uh -huh. and score, who would have thought that that farm kid would have just come out here and done a movie with Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson? We Bold believe it. We, we, we've met the farm kid. We, we're not surprised. We, we, yeah, we, 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 think, we think it's possible. We know it's possible. We saw it coming. It's no surprise, just so you this know. This is a great way to start your Monday. I know, right? And I'm not just saying this because you said I can visit the farm whenever I want. Did Always you? Always welcome. 
there, that is an open invite. Anytime you want to come and buck bales and hang out with cows, it's, it's actually quite fun. Well, the reason you invited me to the farm, let's just be clear, Pearson, is because I said that I wanted to be buff like you, and you were like, go ask my parents. <laughs> and I was like, what's that got to do with anything? Because I did see the Dope Queen's trailer, and I was like, what in the what? So you're saying if I get to the farm, is it from the hard work that I'm going to get the six-pack abs, or am I getting uh, genetically, like, transformed? It, th there is some genetic modification. Um, we, do, uh, we do breathe special air up in Washington State. And, uh, bucking bales. I'll tell you what, you've never gotten an entire body workout like that. We bucked uh, 20 ton of bales last time I was up there. So that was, uh, that was a terrible experience. I was so sore for three days. Uh, but actually for Dope Queens, I, I did something polar opposite of what I normally do. I stopped eating. I lost about 45, 47 pounds. I saw. And I did cardio for the better part of like three months. That was it. What do you mean you stopped eating? Because you look, you look healthy. You didn't look, you looked sm sm slimmer, but there were like all the six pack, it was like 22 packs. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I, uh, I, so for Man from Toronto, I had put on uh, 15 pounds or so for the assassin character. I was at 215 pounds and uh, I dropped from that to under 167 range in, in about a month and a half or two months. But I literally stopped eating for, I think, four days entirely. And I was doing two hours of cardio in the morning and two hours at night because I'm playing a, a meth addict. And yeah. uh, he's a real guy. He's the director. Yeah. And uh, we, we were talking about a lot of the stuff that he did. And I'm like, wow, I got I to gotta do justice to this character. So I started dropping weight. Absolutely crazy. I, I would have one pack of those little Trader Joe's seaweed packs uh -huh. a day. Really? That was, that was my whole meal. Wow. So from what I saw, you did like an incredible job from what I've seen so far. And here's the Thanks. deal. So we're going to check out Man from Toronto, Man from Toronto, keep it at number one on Netflix. And then we're going to go to the farm. And then after I get buff, you're going to come back and then we'll talk about more of your stuff that's coming up. Deal? By the way, I'm so game. This is going to be a party. You don't, don't even know. Be, be careful what you wish for. You're going to be asking me not to, not to bother you anymore, Pearson. Oh, no, no. I've been, by the way, I challenge you. I think after you're bucking a couple of bales, you're going to be like, no more. I'm okay. done. This was a stupid idea. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go get ready for that. Everyone at home, his movie, The Man from Toronto, is now streaming on Netflix. Go check it out. And I'll see you on the farm, Pearson. Such a pleasure. I'll see you as well. Bye. Bye.